this book is religiously themed and it's a little bit, there's fantasy elements, but it's a little bit ambiguous uh, without spoiling about um, where you stand religiously. And I know you've said that you are not a religious person, but you are a person of faith. What does that mean? Well, you know, I, I, I do believe in a higher power. Um, and I, I have a lot of faith when it comes to certain things, you know, I feel like, I feel, feel like I, you have to have, you know, for myself, I have to have faith when I sit down to write, for example, that the story is going to show up, those sorts of things. Um, I have faith in a, in a generous universe, you know, that, that the universe all, overall is good. I, I have faith in goodness. Um, you know, I think it will, it will outshine and overcome the darkness. So, so I, that's kind of abstract, I think, but, um, but that's, you know, that, that's where it lays. I don't hew to a, a particular dogma or creed or anything like that. I do belong to a church. I, I belong to the Unitarian Universalist Church. So, um, so that's my, you know, that's my spiritual home or religious home. You could call it my religious home if you wanted, but, um, but here in the South, you know, religion is just a part of the fabric of the South. And, and even though, Houston is kind of a, you know, this, my area of the South is more Southwest. It's sort of, it's not that it's not like the deep South of Alabama or Mississippi, you know, it's not, it's not like that, but we definitely, even here in my town have mega churches, you know, mega Baptist churches, um, huge Methodist churches, you know, so big, big Christian, uh, you know, evangelistic churches. We've got those here. And, and lots of kids, you know, are involved in youth groups and, and whatnot. And so, but um, for me, you know, when I was thinking about how the role of religion in my, in my story, and trust me, I, I also had a reader for the theological part of this story, because, you know, because I'm not an expert in Christian uh, theology, or any other theology for that matter. But, um, but one thing I do know is that in the uh, in in pre Civil War and during the Civil War, the churches were really involved in the abolitionist movement. You know, the, a lot of churches uh, were served as underground railroad stations uh, throughout the throughout the South, and so the churches were a vital part of that. Um, um, you know, of that that movement uh, early on, and so. So I know that, you know, I mean, it's, it's easy to condemn a church, I think. Um, but, uh, and, and also one of the things that interested me, especially when it came to Soleil, my character Soleil, is that um, so often when we're writing about kids who are on a spiritual journey, um, they have a reckoning, you know, they have a, a deep night of the soul kind of reckoning. Um, and they either leave their their church behind or they cling more tightly to it. And, and I didn't want to have a faith journey. You know, I wanted to, to portray a, a girl who is involved with her church and, um, but who isn't necessarily questioning it. Um, you know, because I don't think every, every faith journey has to be bogged down by questions of faith. So, um, so, and also, I wanted to present a church, you know, a, a well-established church that was doing social justice work. And there's a lot of, there are tons of churches that are doing great social justice work. Um, you know, there are a lot of churches, say in Houston, for example, that are still harboring refugees from her, the hurricane, Hurricane Harvey, two years later. And um, so they're doing really wonderful, um, you know, work in that regard. And and not all of them are evangelistic. And I wanted, I did want to show a church and a religious girl who were not necessarily pigeonholed. And so I think we do a lot of that. You know, we pigeonhole our characters and and our kids and everybody else for that matter. And so um, it was really important to me to to to. But it, you know, I also, I, I, David Bowles recently, he's a fellow author, recently did a Twitter stream where he, you know, he was questioning why, why do so many uh, stories for kids leave the re leave religion out? 
when so many kids are involved in religion, when it's part of their life, you know, it doesn't show up really in, in their books. And so, um, so I was glad he asked that question because I do think, you know, if you're going to have a contemporary story with teenagers, at least one of them is going to be practicing a religion of some sort. And so, um, so I, you know, I did want to shine a light on that church, you know, on a, a church that is doing social justice work. It has a history of social justice work and what a character who is part of that congregation uh, look like in the present, you know, in the past, but also in the present day. It's sort of like, a, you know, showing, shining a light on her ancestors to help explain who she is, even though they may not be related, but they're part of her faith family, her religious family. So, Yeah. <laughs> Sounds kind of convoluted, but there you have it. Well, life is convoluted, and, and so is a lot of uh, so are the, a lot of the intersecting themes within uh, Angel Thieves, which is something that really uh, uh, stood out uh, to me. And we're, I'm going off script again, so I'm gonna gush just a little bit. Uh, but um, it's so uh, diverse in in the amount of perspectives that you bring in and the the different subjects that come up, and yet they're all related. They all come back to somebody's an angel, somebody's a thief. You can see that theme coming up again and again throughout. And I, I, I thought you tied everything together masterfully there by the end, which I shan't spoil. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much.